In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in Christ, may it be our care and delight this Christmas Eve to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels, in heart and mind to go unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the story of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience to the glorious redemption brought us by his, this holy child. And let us make this holy house of God glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in our nation, our state, and our community. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick in body and in mind, and those that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all who do not know the Lord Jesus or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May the Almighty God bless us with his grace. May Christ, the King of angels, give us the joys of everlasting life and bring us all unto the fellowship with all the company of heaven. Amen. Amen. O God, because you once caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light, grant that we who have known the mystery of that light here on earth may come to the full measure of its joys in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Ours is a world not at peace. In many places and in many ways, there is no peace around us. From the bombed out fields of, to steamy jungles, to desert wastelands of wars past and present, rising strife among nations and people groups, terrorist bombings in countless cities worldwide, ethnic strife and riots, shootings and murders in neighborhoods. It seems peace is rare. And it's not just the visible turmoil that we see out there in the world, but it's also the turmoil within, the lack of peace within each of us. Sometimes it's due to the shame, maybe from neglecting someone, or maybe guilt of something you did, something you know you did that caused harm to someone else. Maybe apathy, not caring about God or what he says or following his will which of course leads to emptiness and aimlessness, a sense of being lost in life, the sheer exhaustion that so many of us feel, being overwhelmed in all that is going on around us, or perhaps despair, giving up, thinking that there is no hope. You see, there is turmoil all around us, and there is unrest and uncertainty within us, out there and in here. And negotiations and treaties may temporarily help. Counselors and medication may provide partial relief. But ultimately, none of that will bring lasting peace to the world or within ourselves. You see, because the problem is, the core of the problem is that we are at war with God. You and I are at war with God, all of us. We rebel and fight against his will constantly. And ultimately, true peace does not come about by any effort on our part to stop that animosity between us and God. True peace can only come from God himself. This night of all nights, we hear of peace, true peace, a unique peace, an announcement of peace that is not simply whispered into our ears, but it's a thundering chorus of celebration delivered by God's messengers, his mighty angels. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. What is this peace that is announced with such fanfare in the midst of a world convulsed with violence back then as well as today? In the midst of humanity back then and today that it seems bent on self-destruction? in the midst of our own hearts, weighed down with unrest and anxiety. What is this peace that is announced by the angels, by the ranks of angels as they thunder down from the glory of heaven? It seems quite odd, doesn't it? Here in a simple manger, surrounded by animals and poor frightened parents, lies the true heart of peace. A baby, a helpless infant, unable to do anything for himself. And yet this helpless baby is God himself, who is able to do all things. He is the creator of all things. Yet he took on help, uh, human flesh and became helpless, a helpless baby unable to do anything for himself. This helpless baby remained voluntarily helpless at the end of his life also, just like here at the beginning. 
he could have called down to his aid the same ranks of angels that were singing at the beginning of his life. He could have called them down there at the end of his life, and yet he didn't. The helplessness of Jesus at the beginning, taking on human flesh and being an infant, and the helplessness of Jesus at the end when he cried out, being forsaken. That helplessness of Christ is what brings true peace. The world doesn't understand this. The world does not understand true peace. It does not come from governments. It does not come from treaties. It does not come, it is not dependent upon other people around us. It does not come from substances. It does not come by having a certain attitude in life. True peace only comes from Jesus. Jesus, the helpless babe born in Bethlehem. He said this to all of us, his disciples back then and us today, right before the end of his life, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give my peace to you. Jesus is the one who brings true peace. Peace with God and therefore peace within your conscience. With that true peace, he brings strength that you may persevere through all the turmoils and the troubles of this world that swirl around us and that swirl within us. The fact that Jesus, your Savior, took on your flesh, your human flesh, and became helpless for you, a baby lying in a manger. That shows, and a most important uh, thing that that shows, you are loved by God. You are loved by him. And you are forgiven by him because of Jesus. And then he sends you his Holy Spirit to strengthen you in the midst of the troubles of life. Both now and throughout the year and coming years, keep your eyes fixed on that glorious birth, the glimpse that we get of the glory of heaven, which the angels proclaimed on that night. For it is the peace of heaven that awaits you both now and in eternity. Peace has come to you this night. Merry Christmas, in Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the offertory.
lesson from Genesis chapter 3. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. lesson from Genesis chapter 22. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A lesson from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A lesson from Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, 
to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. We read together a lesson from Luke chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, 
his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the continuation of the gospel. The gospel lesson from Luke chapter 2, we read together. And
A lesson from Matthew chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
incarnation, gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for Christ is born. Our joy and gladness have no end. May you rest in peace this night, knowing that in Jesus, love came down this Christmas. Yes, yes love, love is here. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to the world. Amen. Amen.